to another edition of Coffee with Coach Choi. I'm head volleyball coach Ian Choi. With me today, I have Aaron Sweeney from Orange County and Tatum Holderied from Fairfield, Connecticut. How y'all doing? Good, good. Good, good, good. Let's jump right in. Um, so y'all are from very different parts of the country um, and, and now y'all are converging into the Bronx. Um, how has your transition been uh, from y'all's respective locations to here? You can go first. <laughs> um, I think for me personally, being so close to the city mm -hmm. um, and having lived in a city prior to coming, I think that really helped my transition coming to the Bronx, uh, just because I was more familiar with um, what it is like to live in a city. Sure. Um, but it was definitely different coming from a suburb yeah. to like a campus, let alone in the middle of New York. Uh, so that's been, but it's been fun. Okay. How about you, Aaron? I also live in the suburbs, so the closest city to me is LA, which is about like 45 minutes to an hour. So just like being able to get into the city with like quick access has been really cool. And we've gone to like Broadway shows and just like yes. Central Park, so that part has been really cool. Which Broadway shows have you seen so far? I've seen Hamilton. Okay. And then recently I've seen Hades Town. Okay. And then I went with a couple of the girls to see Six. Six? Yes. Who does that star? Um, it depends on the show, but it's about the six wives of Henry VIII. Oh, okay. It's really good. It okay. is. Yeah. And, and, and you've seen the same, Tatum? Or have you seen different shows? Um, while being at Fordham, I also saw six. Okay. Uh, before that, before coming here, I've seen a bunch, but... Okay. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, pivoting to y'all's uh, experience playing a little bit of volleyball and, and joining the team, um, Japan was quite a turnaround, a quick turnaround, right? Basically, we practiced for two minutes and then we hopped on a plane, got delayed in SFO, and then went to Japan, right? Um, and so tell me a little bit about your experience at Japan uh, and, and, and your most significant uh, and, your, and your favorite experiences, uh, non-volleyball experiences, uh, while y'all were in Japan. Honestly, like the whole trip was just crazy. Like, like you said, we had, I think I had about a week between graduation and coming mm -hmm. to Fordham. Mm -hmm. So that was just like a crazy transition in and of itself. And then once we got here, it was, I don't even know how long, but we went to Japan soon after. Mm -hmm. So it was a little overwhelming just getting used to the volleyball and getting used to the team. But it was also just such a great experience and I wouldn't have changed it for the world. And I think that that's a place that I wouldn't have gotten to go on my own. So I'm just yeah. so glad that I could go with the team and everything. So what's like a particular like core memory that's gonna stick with you about Japan that isn't volleyball related? I think there was one day, I think that Tatum might say the same one. Probably will. <laughs> but we, <laughs> awesome. where, where were we? It was Kyoto. It was Kyoto. Okay. And uh, there was a big shopping area and then there was, off to the side there was a temple area but it was a really huge temple that was basically a park. Like it had a ton of green space. There was like miles and miles of trees and- Was it the bamboo forest? Oh, I think it was Tokyo. It was in Tokyo. Yeah, okay. okay. I don't remember yeah. where we were. Sure. But we decided to forego the shopping. We decided to go to the temple. <laughs> and then we were just kind of like walking around, exploring. And then our strength coach, his name is Steve. He really wanted one of us to send him a picture of a dojo. That's okay. His yeah, one big Steve. request yep. once we were going to Japan. So we looked at the map and we saw that in the corner of this temple there's a dojo. So we we're like, oh my gosh, we have to go to this dojo and take a picture for Steve. So we like meandered our way through. We got <laughs> to the end, and then I think the actual dojo was closed. But then we kept going, and then there was this like archery. Building. Oh yeah, I remember yeah. that. I remember y'all talking about that. Okay. And we were kind of like peeking in through the back and we saw like these people of all different ages, like girls, boys, whatever, like they were, they looked like professional archers. <laughs> like they had these yeah. huge bow and arrows and the targets were a lot smaller than what I've seen in like American archery <laughs> or like just any archery that I've okay. seen. And they were just really good. So then we went around the back and there was this whole viewing area. <laughs> And then we just sat there and like watched this archery competition. In silence. The whole yeah. thing was in silence. That's pretty cool though. Yeah. And it was just crazy the way that they would like pick it up, put it down, and like there was all these rituals that went along with it. So I think that was my favorite thing just because it was so like unexpected. Like we never <laughs> thought that we'd see that that day. Okay. 
And, and speaking of rituals, um, and this wouldn't be coffee with Coach Choi without talking about your morning coffee or tea rituals. Uh, what do y'all typically do in the morning if you were to drink coffee or tea? Pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's the only So right the first answer. thing you do in the morning is get dressed and go to Starbucks and get a pump, pump, pumpkin spice latte. Yes. I have, now that it's fall season, they are out. And okay. that is what I get every, if I'm getting a coffee, it's That's pumpkin what you spice get. latte. Okay. okay. How about you, Annie? I like cold brew. Oh, interesting. I don't drink a lot of coffee, but I do like that. And I like to get it with like a little bit of almond milk or like okay. some sweetener. Um, and for your cold brew, did you know the caffeine content in cold brew is significantly higher than like hot coffee? Really? Yes, significantly yes. higher. You did know that. Okay. Yes, but I, didn't, I, didn't I don't know, know like how much. You know, it's like more, but... It's a good amount. Know. That's, That's almost two or three cold. times the amount of caffeine. Bonus. Just... <laughs> okay, uh, wonderful. And so, uh, and, and pivoting back to a little bit of the volleyball and the culture, um, you all come from drastically different volleyball cultures from high school and club. Um, how has that transition been uh, from y'all's respective high school and club volleyball cultures um, to uh, Fordham Volleyball? I think for me, I came from an area where volleyball wasn't very big. Mm -hmm. um, at least growing up, like I started volleyball in high school. And that was really the first time that most people were introduced to the sport. Um, so my sisters played in high school and I had some exposure from that, but it was definitely very different from most of the girls on the team from what it sounds like. Um, and it wasn't as like competitive or as serious as other areas. So I think coming to Fordham, like the biggest change was just being in an environment more volleyball and like surrounded by people where we're all so competitive and so passionate and we're all here because we want to devote like these next four years to playing volleyball, yeah. a game that we all love. Um, so I think that's pretty different. And so are there any particular, like, uh, I don't know if colloquialisms are the right word, but like, um, apart from just the competitiveness, just like the, uh, the habits and the behaviors of the team, are they a little different than what you've experienced uh, in high school or club? I think this might just be the difference between like any high school and the collegiate level but i think there's a lot more like time that goes in before games sure things like that like we would just kind of show up half an hour before the game mm -hmm. or not half an hour but, like we wouldn't <laughs> we'd get there but we wouldn't really do much warming up other than the like time you get on the court right before gotcha. or in club that's more based on the tournaments and all that but there wasn't a lot that happened before and after the games it was more just you're there there for the games and same with practice I think like practices were a little shorter um, things like that so it's just a lot more um, like a lot more time spent improving and recovering and uh, weightlifting and all of that that goes into it okay and how about you Eric? yeah I would definitely say the same for like the time commitment is probably mm -hmm. the biggest difference because like in high school and club our practices were two hours we'd kind of just be in and out but now we have like a lot more resources to like take advantage of, which is super nice. Sure. So we just end up spending more time like with the team and in the gym. But I honestly feel like my high school and club like prepared me the best that I could for college level. Yeah. Obviously it's like more intense and faster paced, but I think like the drills and stuff we did have prepared me for like the higher level practices. Oh good. Okay. And uh, how about the pers uh, the dynamics of the team itself, the, the teams that y'all have experienced in club and high school versus uh, college? I feel like since we went to Japan, we've like lived with the team over the summer. Like I've never been so like bonded with the team okay. as this one because in high school, like you go to school with them, you might have classes, you might hang out, and then you have practice for two hours and you go home. And then in club, I really would only see my club teammates for like a couple hours a week when we had practice. Mm -hmm. So just having, like living with each other and spending more time with each other, we eat like a lot of meals together, we just do a lot of stuff together, so it's like we spend a lot of time together on the court and off the court, so it's just easier to like be bonded and okay. figure out how each other like plays. Who's the funniest person on the team? Oh, I think Nye is pretty funny. Nye is pretty funny, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, why? why? I don't know, just like the comments that she makes are just funny. Okay. I think it's more the way that she says things. Because she says it with a straight face? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Okay, how about you two? If it's not Nai, who's the funniest person on the team? You can say yourself, too. No, I don't think it's myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I would probably say, hmm, maybe Alexa. Alexa? Yeah. Why? She just makes a lot of funny comments and she always Very knows like the time and place to do it. It just comes out and it's it always puts a smile on my face. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, it's good to know. Okay. Well, thanks for joining uh, me. I, I would cheer you, but uh, uh, unfortunately, I'm the only one with coffee right now, which is kind of ironic. But, it's like, um, but we'll see y'all on the court pretty soon.